Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at polar, and we're going to take a look at graphing polar and converting back and forth between what's called rectangular and polar coordinates, and then we'll take a look at a slope example. Let's start with the basics. Let's graph polar coordinates. In a polar coordinate, the first number you see is your r, and the second number that you see, that's your angle of rotation from the positive x-axis. That's your r comma theta. So to graph this, we need to go to the fourth circle out, and we need to rotate 2 pi over 3. So if we rotate 2 pi over 3, we'll be on this radial line. These spokes here are called radial lines. So we're at 2 pi over 3, and it intersects all of these concentric circles. And so here's my 2 pi over 3, and I just go out to the fourth circle, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's my point A. Let's do another one. What about 3 comma 7 pi over 6? We rotate 7 pi over 6, which is this radial line right here, and from the origin we go out 1, 2 to the third circle. And so that would be my B. Now you can have a negative radius. I'm going to show you what that means. Let's rotate the 5 pi over 4. Now 5 pi over 4 is 225 degrees, which would be right here on this radial line. This is 5 pi over 4, 225. Instead of coming out this way too, since the radius is negative, I reflect it back the other direction. So I'm going to go backwards this way, and that's how you graph negative 2 or negative radius, and so that would be my point C. Then you can also have a negative angle. Of course, a negative angle we're sort of used to, that just means rotate clockwise. So 2 comma negative pi over 6 would be negative pi over 6, and then the second circle, so that would be right here. That would be D. All right, so let's take a look at some conversions. We're going to definitely need to know these formulas. Now, if we have a little triangle here, and I've got a theta, this is x, and this is y, and I'm going to call this r, then my cosine of this angle theta is x over r. So if we multiply both sides by r, we get that x equals r cosine theta. This is how you're going to go between rectangular and polar, by, that, by x equals r cosine theta. Now sine of theta is y over r, so y equals r sine theta. We also know that the tangent of theta would be y over x. That's a way of getting back to the angle if you know the y and the x. And of course with the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So r can be plus or minus, although we'll usually pick the positive version, of the square root of x squared plus y squared. So let's do an example of converting something to rectangular coordinates. So this is in polar form. This is an r and this is a theta. We want to get to an x and a y. So the way we get x is we do r cosine theta, and the way we get y is we do r sine theta. So my x is going to equal r times the cosine of 5 pi over 6, which is going to equal 2 times negative square root of 3 over 2, which is going to equal negative square root of 3. And my y is going to equal 2 times the sine of 5 pi over 6, which is going to equal 2 times 1 half, which is going to equal 1. So my rectangular coordinates are negative square root of 3, comma, 1. Now let's go backwards. What about going back to polar coordinates? I've got an x and a y, and we're just going to graph it. So if I go right 3 and down 3, I am at this dot right here. And I can make a little triangle to figure out my r, which would be the size of this hypotenuse, and my angle theta, my rotation here. So if I went right 3, this x is 3, and my y is negative 3. To get the r, we're just going to do the Pythagorean theorem, and you're going to get that this is 3 square roots of 2. That's your r. Your angle theta, you have to figure out, and you can figure that out by doing, you know, the tangent of theta or whatever, but I, I can see here that I've got a 45, 45, 90 triangle because it's isosceles 
that's got like the x, x, x squared, so two relationships. So this angle right here is pi over 4. You could also do, since you know the tangent of theta is equal to y over x, you could also do the arctan of negative 1, which is another way of getting us to negative pi over so in polar coordinates, I've got r, which is 3 square roots of 2, comma theta, which is negative pi over 4. All right, so let's go on to the next page here, and let's convert equations back to polar form. y equals 4, of course, is just a horizontal line up at 4, but it also has a polar name. Since y is equal to r sine theta, I can replace y with r sine theta, and I can solve this for r equals, and that would be r equals 4 divided by the sine of theta, which you could also call this 4 cosecant theta. So that's the polar version of the horizontal line at y equals 4. Now here is an equation of a circle with the radius of 5, and I know that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So r squared equals 25, or I could just say that r equals 5. The equation of a circle with the radius of 5 in polar, mo in polar mode is pretty easy. Just r equals 5. All right, so now we're going to do some more conversions, and then we're going to sketch the graph. So I'm going to start with r sine theta equals 3. We know that r sine theta means y, so y equals 3. And that's not bad. I can just come up here to 3, and it's just a horizontal line right across there, y equals 3 done and done. r equals 2 cosine theta. Now this is going to be a little different. Um, cosine of theta is equal to x over r. And I can multiply both sides by r and I can get r squared equals 2x. And finally r squared is x squared plus y squared is equal to 2x. So there is a rectangular form. Now, in Algebra 2, you would bring the 2x over and complete the square to figure out what the circle was, but a couple of days ago, we did a polar discovery worksheet, and we already know what this looks like. If you have r equals a cosine theta, it is a circle that's out to the right, and the 2 tells you the diameter, so we know we have a radius of 1. So the graph looks just like this. So there's r equals 2 cosine theta. It's a lot easier to look at in polar form. So what about theta equals 2 pi over 3? Well, I know that I can take the tangent of both sides. So I've got tangent of theta equals the tangent of 2 pi over 3. And I've got a substitution for the tangent of theta. That is y over x. And the tangent of 2 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3. So my equation is y equals negative square root of 3x. So I've got this line coming down through the origin. It's got a negative slope, and the slope is actually square root of 3. That tells you what the slope is. All right, last thing we're going to do today is we're going to do slope. Now, the way we get slope in polar form is very similar to parametric. We're going to take our x equals and y equals equation, and we're going to take the derivative of those. Because of the chain rule, dy dx is going to equal dy d theta over dx d theta. And we're just going to do that every time. This has some crazy formula, and I'm not a fan of the crazy formula. I would like to keep it simple, stupid, right? The KISS version. So we're just going to do dy d theta over dx d theta. So let me show you how that looks. First of all, if you're given an r equation and a theta, you are going to need to write out that x equals r, which in this case is 3 plus 2 sine theta, cosine theta. So there is my x equation, r cosine theta. And y equals r, 3 plus 2 sine theta, times the sine of theta. So there I have my x and y equations in terms of theta. So we want to do dy d theta over dx d theta, and that will be my dy dx. So let's see if we can't figure that out. I'm going to have to use the product rule here. So let's do dy d theta on top. So it's going to be the first 3 plus 2 sine theta times the derivative of the second, so that's cosine theta, plus the second, which is sine theta, times the derivative of the first. And the derivative of the 3, of course, is 0. And the derivative of 2 sine theta is 2 cosine theta. 
and that's all over. Now we're going to do dx d theta. So we're going to do the product rule here. So it is, again, the first 3 plus 2 sine theta times the derivative of the second. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I'll just put the negative in front of all of that. Now plus the second, which is cosine theta, times the derivative of the first, and the derivative here is 2 cosine theta. So that is, I told you it's like an ugly formula, there is dy dx, and we want this evaluated at pi over 6. So dy dx evaluated at theta equals pi over 6 is me plugging pi over 6 into all of these thetas. And I did that, and you're just going to have to trust me, and I got negative 5 square roots of 3. And I verified it on the calculator, and it's right. So anyway, there you go. That's the first part of Polar, and I will see you guys tomorrow.